My name is Yas Simon. I'm a principal of Thinkwell Studios. I've been living in Los Angeles, Beverly Hills for close to 30 years now. I don't think I ever really wanted to work in Hollywood, but when I went to art school, you know, back in the 80s, Steven Spielberg, George Lucas were coming out with groundbreaking films. And we would look at the magazines and see the behind the scenes because it looked incredible. And as we all would say, this is the dream job. Maybe, you know, we could work on something like that. That would be the best, the most amazing experience. But that was, I think, the seed of that idea of working in Hollywood. I don't think I ever wanted to. I went to art school to become an illustrator. I thought that was a goal that I very much wanted to fulfill in New York City. And uh, life has a way of uh, taking you down a path you never quite imagined. I tried many things in, in my career in, as an illustrator in New York. And I had several friends that had moved out to California. One of them was pursuing his interest in working in entertainment as a lawyer. We were good friends, and he in invited me to come out and stay with him, and uh, I could pursue my interest in animation and special effects. How I got my first break, or my start, as a makeup artist, I think it, it probably is through connections. Uh, my friend, who I was roommates with, was very supportive of introducing me to people and doggedly insistent that I send out resumes to every single studio and take every opportunity to interview. And so uh, I think that's that first break. And introduced me to a friend of his who he went to uh, film school with. And he was working at Stan Winston Studios at the time. And I remember showing him my portfolio and he showed me the work that he was doing. It was on some, some feature films which were really impressive, like Alien and just the makeup work that he was doing. And I said, you know, if you ever need me for something like this, just give me a call. And I got a call back. I just uh, got a first low budget uh, TV series. It was called Ultraman. It was the beginning of uh, um, Power Rangers and uh, all that, that genre from the Japanese uh, Godzilla. So it was a big fan base for that and they wanted to do an American version of that TV series and it took me uh, out here for about nine months working on that film and I'd get to meet so many talented people in the industry. Other artists, other young artists with the dream of coming out to Hollywood after seeing guys like Lucas and Spielberg I said, ah, I want to be able to work on something like that that looks like the best job in the world. So I came out with a, it was kind of the last wave of special effects um, because technology was going to take things to a whole new level. So I came out in 93 and we all went out to sit in the theater to watch Jurassic Park. And we looked at each other and said, we're going to be like those dinosaurs up there. We're going to be extinct soon. <laughs> and that was it. We caught the last wave of the old ways of special effects, which was the movie magic that brought us out here. That movie magic, which probably inspired guys like Lucas and Spielberg um, with the, the, uh, the grandfathers of, uh, of special effects, the old, old ways of doing it. Those guys influenced them. And, and we all influence each other as artists. I'm happy to share with you some of my work. Um, recently, um, we had some tragedy in my family. I lost my wife of 52. She's a brilliant soul. Her name was Kim Simon. We were married for almost 25 years. And uh, I had an exhibition dedicated to her. Uh, it was coming up on her birthday, and these pieces behind me were, uh, were inspired by her. 
I, I also did several uh, portraits of her, focusing on one of her features, which were her eyes, which were the, uh, the window of the soul. And the name of the, uh, the exhibition was Soul Searching. And you can see these, these three pieces behind me are extremely powerful and so inspired by my experience um, what our family had gone through, the things that you see that you cannot unsee, this screaming eye, this, um, this searching the heavens. And you can see those tears running down and then he emerges from a pool of tears searching. And um, this piece here is, um, I call it an ascending soul. Um, it seemed that she had this out-of-body experience talking about how she was going through these veils into, um, obviously, into the light. So it's going to this brilliant light and some celestial entity is carrying her upward. And so these, these pieces were totally inspired by, uh, by my wife. I just so happen to have a few items of uh, memorabilia here um, from my work in, in the film business. I had the privilege of working with a very illustrious makeup artist. His name was Rick Baker. He's won several Academy Awards. And two of the projects, uh, two of the feature films I worked with him were um, Men, in the, Men in Black and Nutty Professor. And I uh, actually saved several copies of these as a little memento. These two. And the Oscar goes to David Leroy Anderson and Rick Baker for Men in Black. This duo last created makeup magic for the Oscar-winning Nutty Professor. Rick Baker has also won Oscars for Ed Wood, Harry and the Hendersons, and an American Werewolf in London. Uh, we'd like to thank the Academy, Columbia, Amblin, Steven Spielberg, Barry Sonnenfeld, Walter, Laurie, Graham, and Steve Mullen for making the film. Don Peterman for his photography, Get Well Don. A special thanks to my crew. I'm honored to work with such talented artists. You're only as good as your crew, and, and I guess it, this means I have a damn good crew. As an artist, the way we give back is showing that people, the viewer, the one who appreciates the aesthetic, that this world that we live in is filled with wonder and beauty. And sometimes we don't take a moment to stop and look at that beauty. So the artist says to the viewer, take a moment, there's something I wanna, I wanna show you, something that we both can appreciate. And this connection is very powerful and it, it translates to all, all forms of artwork, whether it's performance art, dance, music, it's a very powerful thing that the artist does. It also connects us as humans. We want to feel connected, we want to feel a part of something as opposed to being alone in this world is so primal. It's almost it's instinctual, like a, like a child needs to bond with a mother to survive. We are hardwired as humans to connect with one another. My aspirations and hopes for the future is obviously when I share my work is to bring joy to people, to feel a sense of connection and um, that they can have it and display it in their homes. And it's a very, very powerful thing for me to connect with people who want to have my work on their walls, sitting on their shelves. And uh, I'm trying to to let people know about us through social media. Outside of work, I would say my notable <laughs> endeavor is probably being a father. Uh, for me, there's nothing more meaningful than my girls. They give me a sense of purpose, a sense of meaning, 
and uh, they give me strength, especially during times where I'm uh, kind of lost, especially in a world that we live in today, and I can see the struggles that they have. I'd say the one experience that probably has taught me the most is probably being married to my uh, amazing wife, a blessed memory. But this special soul endured, always smiling, never complaining, so courageous how she lived her life. Truly special in a living example of what courage is and in the face of so much. I think my best advice for anybody aspiring to be an artist or whatever they are passionate about doing is uh, it's important to have a dream. It's important to believe that you can achieve that dream if you set your mind to it, no matter how many times people tell you no, because uh, that's part of the process. And also, a lot of times, failing teaches you a great deal about what's, uh, what's important is to just keep going. It's an important thing never to give up. And hard work, I guess. Nothing, there's no substitute to developing your craft and honing your skills, always upgrading your skills, especially with technology today.